In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So begins the prologue to John's Gospel. Prologue, because in these few sentences, John sums up all that he's going to say in his Gospel. In the beginning, takes us back to Genesis, to creation, the beginning of things. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness did not overcome it. Reminds us of the battle that God wages to bring light to our lives. John the Baptist came as a witness to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone coming into the world. As he writes his gospel, John is telling us that now things are changing. God himself has come into our world. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God. God is working for everyone. His free gift is eternal life for all who will hear. But many still do not hear, or hearing do not accept his light. John in his gospel tells of that battle and how Jesus triumphs, so that we can say that we have seen his glory, the glory of a father's only son. The word became flesh and gave himself for us. He went through dark times, but now he gives glory and honor. And it will take John the rest of his gospel to unpack all these ideas, to give the story of Jesus' life that bears witness to these truths. And this morning, I've got about 10 minutes. So I cannot do justice to all that is in these words. Instead, I'll focus on the parts which resonate with our other readings. So let us return to, in the beginning was the word. John's use of logos, or word for Jesus, appeals to my philosophical self. It reminds me of the times when I want to think about how much bigger God is than the world, or indeed the universe, which depends on him for its being. For some, this makes God distant. But in Jesus, God is no longer beyond the universe. Rather, he takes on our very flesh and blood. He too became a baby. God is with us. The word has revealed God to us. And so as John begins his gospel, he has in view all the revelation all the glory, the light and the truth, the witness that Jesus will bear to God. The words that will come from Jesus in his living and teaching and dying and rising that sums up the revelation of God. And John sums that up with, he is the word. The word that existed before there was any created matter and as God spoke through him all things were created we also have this idea in our Old Testament lesson wisdom speaking for herself talks about how she was there before the beginning of the universe how together three in one God created our universe and the glory of God is seen in the creation and the Psalms also tell us of the glory when we lift our eyes to the heavens we cannot but believe that there is a great maker of heaven and earth you might say that the beginning of the universe was a very long time ago and what does it matter to us today how things began? What use is my philosophy? What difference does it make? But I would say that none of us remember our own birth. 
but we were shaped by our father and mother. Each one of us is an individual with our own gifts. But who our parents were, how, they, how we were raised, makes us what we are today. So the universe, brought into being by God through the word, with wisdom the spirit there, sustained by that spirit, is dependent on God. We've also sung and read of how God continues to sustain the universe, to sustain our world. And we are in this world. We are of this world. And through Jesus, God entered the world. He shares in our humanity. He shares in our, he shared in our daily lives. He shares still with our sharing, our caring, our loving and our living. For the word, Jesus Christ was and is God. So the three came and created. And we could think of the creation. Snow might not be to everybody's taste, but it can be beautiful. But as we think of them, the three creating, we come back to those words of how John expresses it, that God, Jesus, the Word, was and is God, and also was with God. He says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Jesus has a relationship with God. God is not alone. He is in fellowship. So when God shares in our humanity, John is also saying that we need to share in God's community. Our faith cannot be lived out without each other. Our faith is communal. Faith is not just for individuals, but for the whole body. We may be used to thinking of our faith as something individual, But John is telling us that the gospel is not about individual servings of grace, but huge overflowing helpings of grace for the entire universe. Think of your own faith beginnings. Every story of faith beginning has to do with God, but also with people. God and people. God and the flesh. Where did your faith begin? When did you come to the light? For most of us, it probably began when our parents took us to church. And they were baptised at a time when most of us weren't there. But they, I thought they were coming today, but they will be coming one morning soon. And when they come, we'll be welcoming them because they were not just baptised as individuals, not just baptised into their own family, They're not just going to be raised in the faith by their mother and father, but we will be welcoming them as children together with us, as we are in one family. And so for all of us, the story of our faith will be a faith that comes from God, the gift that comes from Jesus when he died for us, a faith that's sustained through the Spirit, but it's also a faith that comes to us and calls us into community. St Mary's continues, only as it is community, as we work together to care for each other, to raise our children and to be a community, a community of faith. But we need also to remember that John came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. And so we need to live out our faith beyond the church walls to invite others in. And the writer to Colossians also reminds us that through him, Jesus, God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, 
whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. So as we gather at this communion table, where we will be fed by Christ's body, we join as a community, sharing the word made flesh. And may the Lord help us to see his glory. For John, in those few sentences at the beginnings, also reminds us that through his death, through his defeat of death, Jesus is raised to glory. And many of the hymns we're going to sing remind us of Christ triumphant, who is now reigning in heaven, who is worthy of our worship. So may the Lord help us to see that glory, help us to worship him, and to be ready to be sent out to share that light, that word, with the world. Amen.